no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, can you hear me now? We are checking out a new sound system potential. This is a demo model, so um, Nick or any of us who are here, if you can give us any feedback on how it works, that would be great. You were supposed to laugh, or groan, whatever. Our flowers on the altar today are sponsored in memory of Cheryl Duval in remembrance of her birthday, March 2nd, by Joe Krosky and family. This Wednesday, it marks the season of Lent, and on Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, we're going to be having worship at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary, we'll be having Holy Communion and the imposition of ashes. For kids after choir, there is going to be pizza provided for you so that the kids and the families can actually make it to both choir and the Ash Wednesday worship service, so you're all welcome. Immediately following worship today, you are invited, everyone is invited, no exceptions, to come next door and have a lunch in celebration of the conclusion of the County in Capital campaign. And all the results of the campaign are going to be announced and we're going to have lunch. And if you're thinking, oh, there's no such thing as a free lunch, today there is such a thing as a free lunch, so please come. And if you happen to have not yet pledged um, to the Capital campaign and are interested in doing so, there are pledge cards available in the back of the sanctuary. And during the time of the offering, you're invited to bring forth your pledge, your pledge cards um, with your offering. You can drop it in the offering plate at the time of the offering. Next week is going to be the health fair. Um, more information on that is going to be coming. But on Thursday evening is the night of setup. There's going to be a meal provided for everybody, and all of that is going to take place. So please be here to town on Thursday night for the setup. And doors open at 10 a.m. on Saturday. And helpers need to be here at what time? 8.30. Helpers are asked to be here by 8.30 on Saturday morning. The CPR class is set up for March 14th. Scholarships are, it's soon time for scholarship season, so information on that's in the bulletin. And we're starting a book study a week from Wednesday, and information of that on that is found in the bulletin. If you have any questions, please see me. Gary Garrison is going to be presenting a Tigger Award this morning. The Tigger Award is presented at St. Mark's to people who like Tigger demonstrate that extra push and enthusiasm that makes the life and ministry of St. Mark's even more vibrant and exciting. Today's honoree is currently co-president of the Mr. and Mrs. class. That's something you probably know. What you may not know is that she also has served over 20 years on the Keeping in Touch Committee, which keeps our college students connected to the church while they are away from home. In addition to that, quietly behind the scenes, this lady performed many visitations of class members who have become shut in and provides transportation for many other members. Today's Tigger Award winner is Deanna Campbell.
and every one of you for coming out and supporting the youth at our annual Chili Supper and Talent Show. I have a few numbers I'd like to share with you. That evening, we brought down a total of $1,200 just from the Chili Supper itself with additional offerings and giving that was done the Sunday and throughout the week. We had a grand total of $1,500 that was donated. After our expenses and our tithing to the unified budget, we are left with $503.95. Just thank you so much for your contribution, and I really can't thank you enough. This is a very incredible contribution, and I love you all so much. And now let us center ourselves and prepare ourselves.
now greet one another and pass the peace.
you took yours? Well, a friend of mine had asked a group of uh, five-year-olds how they show love. Five of them. And one little girl said, when mommy takes a sip of the coffee before giving it to daddy, make sure it's okay. <laughs>
This sounds like a little thing, but it's really critical. That is why this has to be the primal question of Christianity. If we don't know who we are and why we are here, there's very little risk. There's very little reason for us to be here. Paul, as St. Paul so often does so beautifully, brings us back to some foundational things. He writes, love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. And at the end of the passage, he says, love is fulfilling the law. Over the past few weeks, we've been pondering three great loves, a proposal and point to ponder something from our denomination. We've explored the love of creation, the love of neighbor, and the love of children. And today, I want to focus on why these things really matter to us. I think they are important for us to focus because they're all about the right thing, namely love. They focus on the great commandment of loving God and loving neighbor. And in self-focusing, they keep us from avoiding a couple of traps. The first trap is a trap of being overly rigid with our faith. Christianity has had some really dark times over the years. But of all the dark times, perhaps the darkest time in the history of Christianity was in the 14th century. And what is referred to as the medieval inquisition. Much of it was under a man, Pope John the 22nd, one of the French popes in Avignon, France. Pope John the 23rd, many of us are old enough to remember him, lived in the late, was pope in the late 1950s and 1960s. He was happy, kind, gentle, and good. He was the exact opposite of Pope John the 22nd. No one ever accused him of being gentle, kind, happy, good, or loving. In fact, quite the opposite. John the 22nd sent forth one of the most vile people in the history of Christianity, a man by the name of Bernard Glee, to find heretics and burn them at the stake. Glee in his efforts to find the Christian doctrine to such a fine point, often choosing and finding people who had not quite defined it as narrowly as he had. And as soon as a person was accused of being a heretic or wavering off any little bit of what we thought was the right thing, he basically went after them. And an accusation to him meant certain guilt. And to make sure that everybody could, would confess to their guilt, he would torture them until they would confess their heresies. And then he would burn them at the stake. Some of them, who he disliked the most, were actually taken back to Avignon, France, and burned at the stake for the entertainment of John the 22nd and we. And to make it even worse, they would use green wood to make it take a really long time. The object was not just to kill people, but kill them slowly and hard. They were not the only ones to do this. And this happened to many people before and even during and after the Protestant Reformation. Many people had blood on their hands, we being probably the most heinous. But within this day, we still exist with people who want to define Christianity so finely, so narrowly, that it is easy to condemn others. We no longer physically burn people at the stake, but it is so easy in Christianity to marginalize people, and it happens so often. And Paul is reminding us when we go to love, when we go to a doctrine centered on love, a love for the dignity of God's creation, the dignity of neighbor, and the dignity of children, we find that we will not make the point so narrow that we keep excluding everybody. But secondly, for every one thing, there's always the total opposite. There are times when we, as people, as religious people, have no boundaries, no limits, no dogma, so much of everything that there appears to be nothing. 
and they're, cat and they're playing fiddler on the roof. Someone comes from Tevia and says to Tevia something. And Tevia, who is a man of boundless love and acceptance, says to the man, I agree with you. An onlooker goes up and says the exact opposite to Tevia. And Tevia, who is very expansive, says, I agree with you. A third man comes up and says, look, I saw you talk to this guy and you agreed with him. I saw you talk to this guy and you agreed with him. They totally disagreed on everything and you agreed with both. It's impossible for you to have agreed with both of them. To which Tevia replied, I agree with you. Tevia's friend is obviously frustrated. Tevia has a big heart and no real boundaries and parameters at that point. And sometimes when we stand for absolutely everything, we end up standing for nothing. Sometimes within the United Church of Christ, I've heard people say, well, you know, if you join the UCC, you can believe anything you want. Well, not quite. Please know that we are, we are the United Church of Christ. And by using the title Christ for Jesus, we're making a statement of embracing Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We pray in the name of Jesus. We sing a doxology dedicated to the Trinity. We read the Bible and work to interpret it and live by it. We pray. We did a capital campaign to facilitate particular kinds of worship that praises God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in this church. We're doing health fair next week in the service to God. People serve at White Flag Shelter in the service to God. We do soup kitchen and clothes closet, all of these things. All the outreach is done in the name of Christ. All of the music we sing is dedicated to praising God. Our brothers are actually wide. Not a very fine point at all. But not so wide that we agree with absolutely everything. Which is good. We have to have boundaries. We have to have parameters. And I like to have them be expansive. But we also have to remember that when we get too expansive, we go nowhere. I mean, just think. I have the worst sense of direction in the world. The greatest invention since sliced bread. Actually, Betty White is older than sliced bread. But I'll go back to sliced bread. The greatest invention of sliced bread to me was GPS. Because I get lost really easily. Could you imagine your GPS saying, turn right, or left, or go straight, or turn around, whatever you want? It wouldn't be helpful. We all need boundaries. So, why are these loves important? They remind us of our love for creation, our love for neighbor, and our love for children. And these things are not separated from our love for God. We do not love God and your creation. We love both. Our love for creation is a reflection of our love for God, and our love for God is a reflection of our love for creation. We do not love God and your people. We love both. The love is intertwined and inseparable. We do not love God and your children. We love both. The love of one is, is seen from the one from love of one is the love of both, seen from different perspectives. Different perspectives. And here's what's funny. How to do this is actually very simple and really obvious. It's reading what Paul wrote to the Romans. And he did it very concisely. First he said, keep the commandments. He only mentions a couple. But in using, he's using them as an example, not an exhaustive list. He's reminding us that when we keep the commandments, we're not doing so because it's the rule of law as much as we are doing so because of our love for God. Keeping the commandments is our way of demonstrating our love for God, our love for creation, our love for neighbor, our love of children. We love all that God has made. We love all God's people. We love all God's children. We can fall on our knees all we want and say, oh God, oh God, I love you, I love you, I love you. We can do this until we turn purple. 
But if we don't get around to loving God's creation and God's people and God's children, we're just saying words. Think about this. We all like to hear the words, I love you. But they ring hollow when the person who says them does not show them. Words are easy, but in the actions of the challenge. And that's why all of this is so important. The three great loves that we've been reflecting on has been our challenge to put actions to our words. On Wednesday, we begin the season of Lent. And Lent is a time we can put into practice our love of creation, neighbor, and children. It's the command of God. It's up to us to just do it. Amen. <laughs> As we pray this morning, there are people who would like to remember your prayer. Uh, we continue to pray for. Grace Geneva, Mike and Denise Thompson, John Trinka, Juanita, Suff Juanita Sutherland, Susan Vincent is going to have a surgery in Florida tomorrow, so we're asking people to start in our prayers. Uh, we pray for all the people who have been afflicted with the coronavirus around the world, um, that they might find a solution to the spreading of this disease and being with the people who are sick. We continue to pray for Dean Reiser, Alan and Carolyn Mason, and Jim Mattis, uh, Matisse County Pearson's um, brother who's in critical condition in uh, Indianapolis. Are there other people you'd like us to remember? Yes. Okay, I'm going through Sean's age with the camera screen is now. Yes. Linda DeVries, who actually had back surgery on Friday, um, and Bill DeVries is having knee surgery this week, so we pray for both of them. And also we pray for Nancy Miller, who had back surgery um, last week, and is going back to have back surgery this week. Yes? My uncle Ken Corbin passed yesterday. Your uncle Ken Corbin passed away yesterday. Let's 
pray. And I, I, I cited something, you know, horrible from the medieval period of Christianity, but my prayer this morning is going to be from the prayer of St. Francis, one of the great blessings of that time period. Let us pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. But the divine master, grant that we may seek not so much to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day. Share all God's blessings with each other and with God.
congregation. Let our hearts be touched with your love this week so we may spread that kindness throughout the entire community. In your name we pray. Amen. Before the commission, I just did one other question. Um, did you hear better today? Uh, a lot better, just a little better. A lot better. Because I, I, I think it, we're looking, we've been looking at different systems, and this was a person from Louisville who allowed us to test out the system, and it seemed like it was better. So thank you. I invite everyone to turn and face each other and commission each other. Let us go forth into the world in peace. Amen. And let us go forth with God's blessing to love God.